All right, just before we do the constructions, I'm going to show you guys the different type of proof. We've been doing what we call a two-column proof. This is just another layout um, for the same concept of writing a proof. This is just called a flow proof, and I have the definition already written, so if you need to pause this, feel free. Um, but a flow proof, it's just a proof, and it's going to show the structure of the proof, and it's going to be with boxes oops, and connecting arrows. So if you want to look right below my definition, um, this is what a flow proof looks like. So basically instead of laying out in the two columns, we have different boxes that basically would have what we would call our statements, and then underneath the little box is what we would call the justification in a two column proof. So what I have here for you guys, this is all completely laid out. We just have to fill in the reasoning for what's going on in the diagram. Okay, so this maybe have a little bit more to it than I would have you guys write down in a two-column proof. In a two-column proof, I'd just have you do what are the three congruent triangle parts and the congruent statement. You can see that this has a little bit more information in it than what we've done in class, so we're just going to fill in missing reasons in this particular problem. So usually... Um, at the beginning here, you'll notice we have this diagram, and we have L, which is the line here. Um, actually, PC would be another way to label that. Um, is perpendicular to AB, so you can see in the diagram they've put the right angle there. Um, they also say that L bisects AB, which would be the segment going across the bottom of this triangle here at point C, and P is on the line. All right, so in the flow proof, um, this is literally just stating all the given information. So for A, we're just going to fill in given. Okay, now it says ACP and BCP are right angles. So I would say I would take that by um, the definition here where we have the perpendicular uh, information and the given information. I know those are right angles because it told me that it was perpendicular there. Um, and then it says those are congruent. Obviously, two right angles are congruent to each other, so I would just say that's definition of a right angle, um, or basically what we're saying, or you could say definition of perpendicular there. I would take both of those, um, but basically because of the perpendicular, um, it's a perpendicular and it's a bisector, so we're getting those right angles from that. So that's how I know those are 90 degree angles, because it said it was perpendicular. And then two right angles are congruent to each other. They're just both 90 degrees. If you wanted to say definition of a right angle or definition of uh, perpendicular, I would take either one of those. Okay, again, L bisects A, B, at C. If you guys look back up here, again, that was part of the given information that's just being restated. The triangle parts you get because of that are right here. A, C, this segment, and B, C are congruent. So I would say definition of a bisector there because you're bisecting that segment. That means it cuts it into two equal pieces. And then the final step here, um, P, C is congruent to itself. Now, that's not marked in the diagram, so let me just mark that there. If you have a segment in both triangles, which we do there, it's got to be congruent to itself. That's the reflexive property. So if you guys see here, these are the three congruent triangle parts that I'd be looking for if we did a two-column proof. This is just some extra information stating what we were given and how the given information leads to those triangle parts. So we're kind of flowing through with these arrows. And then if you look at the problem, when you're all done here, look at what you have. We have a side, an angle, and a side, side, angle, side, so side, angle, side would be the reason that those two triangles are congruent.